Are you ready? Me? So, okay. Um, welcome, welcome everyone to Harvard CMSA Quantum Math in Math Physics Seminar Series. We are very happy to um, invite Lin Hao Li from ISSP, University of Tokyo. He will be speaking about boundary conditions and the Lipschitz, Lipschitz multi theorem anomalies of conformal field series in one plus one dimension. And audience, please feel free to interact with Lin Hao and ask questions during the talk. Okay, so let's welcome Lin Hao. It's all yours, please. Thank you. Well, Thank you very much, Julian, for giving me such a nice chance to speak here. Today, I'm going to discuss the relation between boundary condition and the LSM anomalies of conformal field theory in one plus one dimensions. And this work is created with Chang Zhe, who is in National Taiwan University, Yuan, who is in Rican now, and my advisor, Professor Masaki Oshikawa. So before I start, let me mention a few references which are related to today's talk. The first paper is by Han Tawali, Chang Zhe, and Professor Xin Sui Liu. So they mainly discuss the relation between symmetric boundary conditions and the anomaly-free condition for bosonic safeties from the modular events of Obifort theory. Then when divided by this paper, we studied the same relation, but differently from the ingability of anomaly theory. And moreover, we also discussed examples with more complex symmetries. In this talk, I will mainly uh, introduce the examples which correspond to the Lipschitz matrix theorems on the lattice. And uh, based on the result of the boundary state method, we will propose a various version of Lipschitz matrix theorems for the 1D spin chain involving the magnetic, magnetic space group symmetry in the paper, which we are on, appear on archive two. Moreover, there are another two related papers. One is by Ryan and Yifan. So they mainly discuss the same relation between symmetrical boundary condition and the anomaly free condition for higher dimensional theories. And the other paper is by Smith and Professor David Tong. So they, dis they discuss the anomaly for meonic CFTs and found there is no symmetrical boundary condition. So if you are interested in this topic, I encourage you to look at all of them. Now, let me start by a background knowledge of the Tohofta anomalies and the boundary conformal field theory. So the Tohofta anomaly means that if we promote a global symmetry G to a gauge symmetry, there will be some obstructions such as gauge non-invariance. Since Tohofta anomaly is invariant under its flow, it is a useful and powerful tool for studying the quantum field theory especially the strong cooling system. However, in the past two decades, it was realized that a d-dimensional quantum field theory with an anomalous global symmetry G can be regarded as the boundary theory of a non-trivial symmetry protect topological phase in one high dimensions. For example, the topological insulator has a helical stage uh, on its surface, which is protected by the time reversal symmetry. While the whole damp spin chain has a spin one half a boundary mode, which is protected by the spin rotation or time reversal symmetry. This non trivial big uh, bulk H correspondence is known as the anomaly inflow mechanics. So the response theory of the SPT phase can cancel the anomaly term of, of its boundary theory. Moreover, a non trivial SPT phase also suggests that. Its scaffold boundary cannot a symmetrical mass generation. In other words, this anomalous boundary theory has an ingability to be deformed to a gapped phase with unique ground stage. Therefore, there are only two conditions for its energy spectrum. One is gapless and the other is gapped with non-trivial wound state joint So this, this relation was discussed in the papers by Juven, Wen, and Living about 10 years ago. For the one plus one dimensional safeties, 
there is another way to detect the to hold the anomaly based on the generalized laughing argument. So if we gauge an anomalous global symmetry of a given CFT, the OB fault theory is not model invariant. Therefore, there is, a, there is a contradiction between model events and the global symmetry G. Now, if we cut a boundary for this CFT, the Cardi consist condition will play a role of model invariants. Thus, naturally, there will be conflict between Cardi consist condition and the global symmetry G, which implies no symmetric boundary condition and boundary state for the anomaly CFTs. So we, we can also look at this correspondence in another light. So an anomaly CFT cannot exist as a pure one plus one dimensional set, uh, system. And it must realize at the boundary of a two plus one dimensional non-trivial SPT phase. Therefore, this anomaly theory cannot a, semi, uh, cannot a boundary keeping the symmetry G since the boundary of boundary always vanishes. A uh, question? Okay. Uh, the previous slide. Uh, I, I, I don't know uh, one plus one DCFTs that well, but uh, does modular invariance imply that the chiral central charge vanishes or it vanishes up to 24? I think uh, it should vanish uh, as zero, not model 20. Okay. Thanks. Oh, is there any other question? If not, let me go. <coughs> However, as I mentioned before, the Tofuta anomaly can also be detected by the ingravity. Therefore, we wonder if, uh, whether there is any direct relation between ingravity and the boundary conditions of a given CFT. And from this correspondence, we can also obtain the same relation between symmetric boundary condition and the anomaly free condition. Moreover, this method would be more useful for constructing symmetrical mass generation for anomaly free theory. So that's our, the, our motivation for this project. Before going to our main working principle, let me give a basic review of the boundary conformal theory. As we know, the conformal transformation in 2D plane is an analytical transformation of complex coordinate. It is generated by the Velasco algebra, and the Hilbert space of a conformal field theory is a, is a repetition of this algebra. Thus, if we cut a boundary on the whole plane, the theory should be still invariant on the subgroup of this conformal transformation. The elements in this subgroup should keep the boundary invariant. Therefore, the normal energy momentum tensor to the boundary direction should vanish on the boundary. For example, if we consider the upper plane, the energy momentum tensor Txy equals zero on the whole x axis. Thus, any local boundary condition of a Conformal field theory should be consistent with this constraint and named as conformal event boundary conditions. In this work, we will pay more attention to boundary conformal field theory on our annulus. Now the boundary can be put on the space direction. Uh, so here is Xiao from Central Institute. I have a quite naive question for the boundary conformal field theory. Just now, so, so this page, yeah. So the conformal transformations you uh, arise here is only for the local conformal, infinity small conformal transformations, and we know that for the two D plane you have a uh, you have a global tra conformal transformations which is a Mobius transformation. So if there's any global conformal transformations for the boundary conformal field theory. Uh... Actually, I don't know. Uh, or as I, as I, uh, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, in the boundary conformal field theory, people always don't discuss the global conformal transformation with the boundary. 
Okay, I see. I see. Because uh, I I think the boundary should always not the invariant under the global. Maybe. I see. No. Uh, let me go. So now the boundary condition uh, can be put on the space direction, which is the open channel, or time direction, which is the closed channel. In the open channel, the Hilbert space should satisfy two local boundary condition, F and beta, and the partition function is traced over this subspace. Moreover, the partition function can write in terms of characters of the irreducible retention of Velas algebra. On the other hand, in the closed channel, the, the boundary condition will give boundary state on the fixed time. Then the pattern function is the amplitude of boundary state after, at uh, two different times. Here, the theta is the CPT operator as the orientation of two boundaries are reversed to each other. For most of the FTs, theta acts on the boundary state as an identity operator. Moreover, the open channel and the closed channel are related by the S duality. Thus, their partition function should be at same as each other. And this requirement is known as Cardi consistent conditions. It is necessary since the general superposition state of two different boundary states does not correspond to a local boundary condition. Therefore, such superposition should be rolled in our consideration. So if there any question? If not, let me go. <clears throat> now let me give uh, the man working principle in our paper. So we first consider a conformal field theory in one plus one, one, plus one dimension and the given symmetry group G. Then we will add a space dependent interaction. When X smaller than zero, we add V1. And when X larger than L, we add V2. Both V1 and V2 are assumed to gap the system without symmetry breaking. And, the, and then the only middle part is their gap is. In the low energy, these two local interaction will be renormalized into two conformal event boundary conditions at x equals zero and L. Next, uh, we can assume the interaction V2 and V1 are connected by the symmetry transformation. Then the corresponding boundary condition and boundary state should be also related by same transformation showing this figure. Now, if V1 is symmetrical, the interaction in the region X minus zero and X larger than L are same. In the limit L equals to zero, this theory is fully gapped and the party function of boundary conformal field theory is just uh, that of this gapped phase, which is one. And from the expansion of the party function, we know that the identity representation now should appear in this help space just once. On the other hand, if we look at the closed channel, the length air in the open channel will play a role of time. Therefore, V1 is symmetrical, implies the boundary state BA is invariant under each symmetry transformation G, and thus it is a symmetrical boundary state. In fact, there is an argument by Cardi about a close relation between boundary state and the gapped ground state. So Cardi considered this smelled boundary state after an imaginal type of evolution. And uh, by performing the lattice discretization of Euclidean path integrate, he think it uh, corresponds to a possible ground state represented by metro product stage. So the imaginal time tau corresponds to the internal dimension of um, this MPS state and uh, plays a role of correlation lens. Since the Hamiltonian of conformal field theory commutes with the symmetry G, this possible ground state is 
symmetrical if and only if the boundary state is symmetrical. Thus, we can conclude that if a given CFT is anomaly free, there should be a boundary condition, a symmetrical boundary condition, and a symmetrical boundary state, which corresponds to the possible gap ones, gap the symmetrical one state. So, is there any question? Sorry. So, so uh, hi, Jun. Could you let me share my screen again? Sorry. No worry. So now to show how this argument works in the conclude one part one dimensional CFT. We are discussing- can, can you explain the previous slide again? What, what do you do about this working principle? So, Just, uh, again, sorry. So first the way, maybe let me start from this. So first the way consider a space dependent interaction. So in the region X smaller than zero and X larger than here, so the sim the interaction is uh, related by the are related by the symmetry of transformation G, and uh, thus the boundary condition should be also related by same same transformation. And uh, now we assume the V one is the symmetrical mass generation if if the gear, if the CFT is anomaly free, and then we can obtain that the boundary state. Uh, or oh, sorry, the boundary can, the party function of the boundary conformal field, field theory is just one. And then in the closer channel, so we show that this, uh, this factor will imply the boundary state BA is a symmetrical boundary state. And how about the figure and this metric product state? Oh, you mean this? So yeah. this is a, 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 an argument by Cardi. So, so the so he discussed the the relation between the boundary state and the gap to ground state by a represented by the metric product state. So, so the boundary state can be seen as a continuum version of the MPS state here. Uh, can you obtain one from the other? Is that the, uh, uh, what do you try to say about these two things? Uh, so if they, so from this correspondence, we know that if the, if this smelt boundary state is a symmetrical uh, quantum state, so that's the possible one state represented by metro product state in the right side is also a symmetrical one state. Therefore, and this is gapped. Therefore, uh, the if uh, the extension of the symmetrical boundary state will imply the extending uh will imply a symmetrical gap to ground state exists.
Are, are both states are gapped or? Uh, here the boundary state, the, this smell boundary state, uh, is, I don't know how to say that, uh, is gapless, but the corresponding ground state is gapped. So, yeah. And MPS described the gap state, is that right? Or gap yes, yes. yes. So if 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 uh, eigenstate labeled by B is gapped, is gapped or and, and um, what, what is what does this? This is, smell. Uh, sorry. So this smell the boundary state is gapped. Uh, since the imaginal time tau plays a role of correlation length. So if tau is a, is a, is a integer is a finite value. The equation length is also finite. And what does this Hamiltonian of C of T does? I'm not sure I follow what exactly. Maybe I'm lack of knowledge on doing this, but if you know, you can help me. Otherwise, it's okay. What does this operator X on this B imply? Uh, yeah, so. So to construct the gap to ground state, uh, you need to add uh, some relevant operators. And uh, after adding these uh, relevant operators, you can calculate the energy of the this smart boundary state by, by some calculation. And uh, this, uh, and this uh, energy will imply the, the energy of the gap to ground state. Okay. Let, let me just make sure this is a 2D space, right? Uh, yes. And then you put the, the 1D uh, spatial okay. dimensional H along the X direction. Yes, yes, yes. And then... So and then the, the, the vertical direction is uh, time and uh, the horizontal direction is uh, space direction. Okay. Maybe oh, we can. What do you mean by smare, smare boundary state? Uh, so the, this smell boundary state because you, uh, this name is because he, so this state is after an imaginal time evolution. So Cardi named it as a smell boundary state. Does a property change when you increase tau, it become I think it's it's kind of not it's not unitary operator, right? You you write this uh, this is not a unitary evolution. This is exponential decay along time. Yeah, yeah, this is not a unitary evolution. What does it What does it really mean here? What What do you try to do for uh, the? I think uh, Cardi consider this as a variation ansatz for the one state. Okay. So. You can use it to calculate the, to calculate the sorry to calculate the energy and the, and the, and you will find it correspond to the, one the the true ground state. In many examples. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now to show how this work argument works in the convert one plus one dimensional CFT. We will discuss several examples and uh, elucidate their anomaly free condition, both in the in the first theory level and the lattice model. Let's warm up with a simple case. So here is a one dimensional SUN Heisenberg antiferromagnetic spin chain with fundamental retention. Here S is the generators of the Lie group SUN. If N is two, the this Hamiltonian is just the spin one half Heisenberg chain, and the low energy spectrum is indicated by the famous Lipschitz matrix theorems. That is, uh, a one D spin chain cannot have a unique gap to ground state, 
If the spin point cell is half integer with the lattice translation and spin rotation symmetry. Therefore, in the IR limit, there should be a detour anomaly between lattice translation and spin rotation. Now let's figure out how to use our boundary state method to illustrate this point. So as we know, the low energy degree of freedom of the Heisenberg chain can be formulated by the standard Boltzmann scheme with phi and theta variable. Typically, theta corresponds to the near order of the xy direction and the cosine phi corresponds to the near order of the z direction. And the low energy effective Hamiltonian is given by the free boson CFT on CF2 point whose radius is square two. And this boson theory has a Z2 symmetry, which shifts the two boson by half of their half of their radius, and it corresponds to the translation symmetry. Besides, there is another PSU2 rotation symmetry, which corresponds to the on-site spin rotation, and its generators are given by the result of the bosonization result of the spin operators. So for this U1 boson theory, there are only two conformal invariant boundary conditions. One is the delicate boundary condition where phi is a constant on the boundary, and the other is no invariant boundary condition where theta is a constant on the boundary. Since these two boundary conditions both break the Z2 and the PSU2 rotation symmetry, it is impossible to construct a symmetrical boundary state and boundary condition. Therefore, this result agrees with the LCM terms. However, to say this anomaly is a Z2 group, we still need to consider the two copies of the spin chance. Now, the, uh, now since the spin point here is the integer, the LCM terms cannot constrain its low energy spectrum, but instead, this spin chain can have a unique gap sim sorry can have a unique gap to symmetric ground state such as single stage. And the low energy effective Hamiltonian is just given by the two copies of the free boson CFT with phi one, phi two, theta one, and theta two valuable. And the translation and the spin rotation symmetry just correspond to the diagonal day two and the PSU two rotation symmetry. Now to construct a symmetrical boundary condition, we need to consider the generators of the PSU2 rotation. So these generators should act on the symmetrical boundary state as the zero operators. Following this idea, so we found a symmetrical boundary state and, bound and the corresponding boundary condition. And more interestingly, we also construct a symmetrical mass generation from the most relevant oper operators of the boundary stage. So on the lattice, this uh, mass generation can be realized as a spin one half ladder interaction. So here, here are two terms. One is the interaction between two spins of first chain and second chain with same side i. And uh, the other is the interaction between four spins of uh, each square, and uh, it is easy to say this interaction is symmetrical on the spin rotation and the translation symmetry. Now, if, we, if u is positive, the ground state is a wrong singlet state, which is a travel phase. While if u is negative, the ground state is the AKLT state, which is in quadrant phase. Therefore, this gapping potential gaps the, gap the spin chain without symmetry breaking and uh, satisfy the LCM anomaly is a Z2 group. Then it's natural to consider the SUN spin chain with general N and the low energy effective theory is just a, a minus one component U1 boson theory. Similarly, this spin chain also of the spin rotation and the translation symmetry. In the IR limit, uh, they correspond to the PSUN rotation and the Carroll DN symmetry, respectively. Then we can follow the same idea of the, of the spin one half Heisenberg chain, and we found for the key copies of the boson theory, there is no symmetrical boundary state or boundary condition. 
However, if we consider the n copies of the boson theory, we found a symmetric solution of boundary condition. And this result agrees with the thin LSM anomaly of the spin rotation and the translation symmetry on the lattice. So right now, these results are very nice, but uh, so this is a very simple case. And uh, if we want to go one step further and consider the SUN spin chain with higher retention and even spin chain with other Lie groups. So the boson theory cannot describe the low energy degree of freedom, but instead, so the critical phenomenon of this spin chain can be captured by another important CFT, the wide minimum weight model. So this theory is defined with a given Lie group G and the positive. Excuse me. Sorry, I just try to make sure it's a kind of quick. So you are showing that uh, when you have an N such as one spin chain, you can construct symmetry boundary conditions. Yes. And to cancel N copy of the ZN LSM anomaly, preserving the PS1 spin rotation. Yes. And translation Z symmetry. Yes. And maybe you show the symmetric gap potential for n equal to 2 SU2 PSU2 case. And how do I see they are symmetric? Uh, you just uh, act on it. Too. So, so for the PSU1 rotation symmetry. Uh, you, SU2 or PSU2 earlier. Uh, maybe you yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. a simple case. So here, so for, the, for this boundary state, uh, and the symmetry is in the last slide. So here is the symmetry. And uh, the day two just shift to bosom by half of their radius. Therefore, you can just apply the day, the day two. So maybe here is a, so maybe I, so here the, the, and it's a Neumann bound, maybe, uh, sorry, maybe let me see, see for the boundary condition. So, so the boundary condition is uh, about the theta one minus theta two. And uh, after the two symmetry, you know that theta one plus uh, half of the radius and the theta two also plus uh, half of the radius. Therefore it is keep invariant and the same reason for the phi. And uh, for the PSU two rotation symmetry, so you need, you need to consider its generators. And these generators will act on the boundary boundary condition or boundary state at zero operators. For example, we can consider the SD uh, operator. And uh, the, if the SD operator is zero, the phi one plus phi two should be a constant on the boundary. And this is just the second, uh, second, uh, second uh, uh, constraint in the boundary condition. And uh, for the, First, uh, first uh, constraint in the boundary condition. So it comes from another other two uh, spin ge generators. Yes. And and there is also a latest interpretation of this boundary condition. Yeah, there is. You mean this symmetrical mass? Uh, yeah, this may be still kind of a continuum description. Yes, yes, yes. So, so this is the lattice motion. Sorry, is this uh, the gapping potential apply in one plus one D or, or yes. also in two plus one, one plus one? Only in one plus one dimension. But but earlier, would you try to also try to get some zero plus one D gap boundary or not really? Of this of this CFT. Yes, yeah. yes this is the yes the boundary state is kind of uh, zero plus one D. Okay. And uh, from that from from this we can read we can read uh, the one plus one D symmetrical gaping potential. But uh, uh, to be honest, uh, so this uh, trick is uh, 
uh, this trick only works for the boson theory. For the wide dominant weight model, it is kind of very complex. I will show in in the future, in the next in the next uh, slides. Uh, sorry, you say fermionic case will be complicated. I didn't hear clearly. Uh, sorry. I mean, for the wide dominant weight model, so from the oh. you can uh. You can uh, you can read uh, read the symmetrical capping potential from the boundary stage, but it is very complex. So not uh, this very simple in the as the bottom examples. I will show in the in last slide. And what's the latest description of this interaction term? You you also obtain maybe you show in the slides or you you didn't. You mean you mean, the uh, the U term. So this will be the the U term is just a, a coupling coefficient. So you mean you mean the figure or no? Uh, I said that uh, is there a latest latest spin. Version description of this two cosine term that you ate in the previous slide. Is this the answer or is like yes. 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 The spin the the latest spin description of this two cosine term is the next slide. Yeah. So okay. yes, yes, yes. This is the answer for the for the uh, symmetric gaping potential in the previous in okay. the Thank you. last slide. And let me just make sure the anomalies you are consider is one plus one d. Is that some generalized uh, the uh, some kind of a w two of the PSU one some generalized stable Winnie class type of anomaly? Is one plus one d? And, oh, sorry, then should be right in in, in two plus one d invertible t q of t is also so it should be some w two p of v vector bundle some PSU one and maybe with some uh, Z translation gauge field is that an anomaly written in this two plus one D written in this way? Uh, you mean you mean uh, you intru introduce uh, in two plus one D introduce the gauge field of the translation like the Z gauge field? Yes, I, I said that the, what's the anomaly in terms of invertible t topological field oh. in two plus one D. I think, Maybe. sorry, I, I think uh, this is correspond to the weak SPD phase in the two plus one dimensions. So by, maybe by Professor Meng Chen and uh, other guys. It's A cup W2 of PSU. Yeah, that's what I asked, yes. Yeah, that's what I asked. Yeah, that's, that's the, that should be the answer, thanks. Thank you, please go on. Thanks. So let me go. So the wide mean weight model is defined with a given Lie group G and the integer level K. Although the local Lagrangian depends on the extension to the three dimensional manifold B3, whose boundary is uh, physical space time, the total action does not depend on this extension up to two pi. And it is known that the wide mean weight model has a solution satisfied satisfying the Cardi consistent condition and the Cardi state. This Cardi state can represent by the alpha and dangling weights with the lambda vectors. Now let's consider the global symmetry of the wide dominant weight model. So first it has a central symmetry which multiply the G field by a U1 phase. And uh, this symmetry acts on the Cardi state as an automorphism on the dangling diagram. Meanwhile, the wide dominant weight model also preserves the best rotation symmetry as an adjoint representation of the Lie group G. And we found all Cardi states are symmetrical under this transformation. Now let's move to the, SU, the discussion of SU level K wide dominant weight model. So, uh, this, uh, so it has a PSU and DN symmetry. For these two symmetry, the symmetrical boundary state 
exist uh, only if k is multiple of n. Therefore, the the anomaly index of the PSUN and the DN center symmetry is k model n. On the lattice, as I mentioned before, the SUN level k wide minimum weight model can be realized as SUN Heisenberg spin chain with the general repetition. And the PSUN and the DN center symmetry will correspond to the translation symmetry, oh, sorry, will correspond to the on site spin rotation and the translation symmetry. Then, our IR anomaly free condition is uh, uh, is uh, consistent with the DN classification of the LSM type ingability respect to the PSUN and translation symmetry on the lattice. And uh, besides the anomalies, the anomaly index for the anomaly free theory, which is not constrained by the LSM terms, we can also use the our boundary state method to study the symmetrical mass generation and the data of the corresponding ground stage. So for example, if we consider the SU2 level 2K wide minimum weight model, it only has one symmetric boundary state KK. And we found that the mass stress G square is, is a corresponding symmetrical mass generation for this boundary stage. To show this result, let's consider the variation energy of the smell boundary state under this gapping potential. Here, A is the spin of the, of the boundary state, and it can be integer or half integer from zero to K. Now, if the coupling coefficient lambda is positive, the minimal of this variation energy is lowest with A equals K over two. And this is correspond to the uh, symmetrical boundary, boundary state. Moreover, if the coupling coefficient the lambda is negative, the minimal of variation energy is lowest with k a equals zero and k. And these two states will be flipped to each other by the center symmetry. Therefore, they correspond to the VBS order phase, which breaks the translation symmetry on the lattice. Besides, we also found that when k is old, the symmetrical ground state is a Hordan state, while when k is even, it is a travel state. Sorry, sorry. So uh, let me still construct a space, a space dependent perturbation. So here we assume the lambda is positive in the region x minus zero, and it is negative in the region x larger than L. Therefore, if L goes to zero, there is an interface between the between the uh between the symmetrical ground state and the VBS order phase. Then the party function of the middle gapless gap region shows that there is a spin k over two soliton localized on this interface. For example, if we consider the k equals one, the interface between the Hordan phase and the VBS order phase have uh, has a spin one half soliton. Thus, we can conclude that. When k is even, the soliton has a has a integer spin which can be gapped. While when k is old, the soliton has a half integer spin which is gapless, protected by protected by the spin rotation symmetry. And uh, this result was also discussed numerically in the paper by Chibik, Chibika, Affleck, and Melia. Moreover. This boundary state method can also be applied to the wide minimum weight model with general Lie groups. So here are, our, here are our results for the symmetrical boundary state under the vector rotation and the center symmetry. We found that for the SON wide minimum weight models, including B and D series, our results are considered with the uh, generalized LCM terms for the SON spin chain, which is proposed by two ors first and then by Jian B and Xu. And for the other wide minimum weight models, it would be interesting to discuss the lattice realization. We, we will expect the center symmetry will correspond to the translation symmetry on the lattice, and uh, our IR number free condition on the level K will imply the classification of the LSM type ingability for these lattice models. Uh, so, okay. uh, maybe 
maybe it's about terminology. What do you mean by LSM? Uh, here I mean LSM theorems is the ingability respect to the spin rotation and the translation symmetry. Yeah, then this has nothing to do with the effective, the emer this has nothing to do with the emergent effective field theory acknowledges. Yes, uh, so, I mean, so for the LSM terms, uh, on the lattice, uh, for the general spin models, it, it is, uh, it's usually, uh, sorry, it is usually hard to found a uh, LSM constraint for this spin chance on the lattice. But uh, here, so we start from the boundary state method and uh, there is a, uh, there, uh, there is a simple way to classification all the anomalies of the, all wide minimum weight models. And uh, I think this will motivate us to found the LSM theorems for the spin chain with other Lie groups. Yeah, that's good. Uh, maybe let me rephrase the method. The method, so LSM, uh, if I define LSM to be the constraint of a lattice system uh, coming from the translation symmetry and the projective representation of the internal symmetry, then this by itself is an intrinsic property of the lattice system. It, yeah. It, in principle, I don't need to rely on any effective field theory to derive the anomaly, but I can, and to do it, I can start from an effective field theory, which I know for sure can emerge in this lattice system and obtain its anomaly, and then do some pullback to obtain the anomaly of the LSM. Yes. Uh, but, uh, but so let me confirm one thing. So uh, there's another mm, work uh, on lattice homotopy which, yes, yes, yes. So basically, I want to ask, uh, did you discover any LSM beyond lattice homotopy? Uh, actually, I don't find any case beyond this uh, framework. And actually, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, so in our work, uh, I will show one result is based on the, is proved based on the, the, the lattice homotopy. Okay. So, Uh, right now, I don't know any case beyond the, this framework. Mm, thanks. Maybe can some of you state what the latest homotopy theory capture? So, yeah, uh, Nihao, please go ahead. Thanks. No, but I asked a question. Oh, I, 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 I was asking me how to explain what lattice homotopy is, sorry. Ah, uh, so uh, I will, so lattice oh. homotopy. Is so, hope and the uh, Vishwanath's work? Uh, Vishwanath. I, I, Adrian, uh, Adrian McZalatel, Haruki Watanabe, and uh, Chao Ming. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe we, we don't refer to the same lattice homotopy. So I read the, the paper by Rhea and uh, else. Oh, I see. And um, that, that one is based on the previous one. So, so for the, so for the lattice homotopy, so it, in the Rhea and else paper, so they define the anomalous texture to on each side to label the projective rotation, uh, projective rotation of each side, and then they define the equivalent equivalent relation for different uh, projective rotations. So that's the working principle of lattice homotopy. Uh, actually, I don't uh, pre uh, prepare any slides for the lattice homotopy. Sorry. Sorry, can I go or? 
Yeah, please. So, however, this is not the end of our story. So we can still extend the discussion to the to other symmetries, such as the time reversal symmetry. For example, if we consider the SU2 wide mean weight model, it has two time reversal symmetry. One is a T1, which maps T to minus T and the G to G inverse. And the other is the combination of T1 and the center symmetry transformation. Now, if we consider the boundary conformal field theory, these two symmetries are defined in the open channel. To construct the cardi state, we need to work in the closer channel with Euclidean signature by performing the weak rotation and S transformation. Then, according to the CPT theorems, T1 and T2 will act on the cardi state as a CP1 and CP2 symmetry. So for the CP1 and the rotation, we found that there is always a symmetrical boundary state. Therefore, T1 and the rotation is anomaly free. However, if we consider the CP2 and the rotation, the symmetrical boundary state only exists if K is even. Therefore, the T2 and the rotation symmetry will have a non-trivial anomaly for the SU2 wide minimum weight model with older level K. And this will imply a new Lipschitz matrix terms on the lattice. Let me illustrate this point with the simplest case, k equals one. So a lattice model which can reflect the ingability of SU2 level one with the minimum weight theory is a spin one half chain with three spin interactions. Here, the coupling coefficient is one or minus one. And physically, this three spin interaction takes place in the third order perturbation theory of half field half spin for Hubbard models. And we can use this snake like two ladder diagram to, re, uh, to represent this Hamiltonian. And each three spin interaction is defined in each triangle. Then the coupling coefficient will depend on the orientation of each, each triangle and hence them as Carol ladder three spin interaction. For example, so if GR is minus one to R's power, all triangle are uh, anti-clockwise configured as a Hamiltonian H1. And uh, if GR is minus one to R plus one's power, all triangle are uh, clockwise configured as a Hamiltonian H2. These two Hamiltonian only preserve the two side lattice translation symmetry. Moreover, if we consider the staggered Close wise and anti close wise configuration, the cooling coefficient j is constantly one or minus one, which, which corresponds to the Hamiltonian H3 and H4. And these two Hamiltonian will preserve one side lattice translation symmetry. Indeed, a bit of algebra with Pauli matrix can, can lead to the decomposition of these three spin intentions. Here we can use the J1 and J2 to label the J of the old size and the even size. Then the low energy effective Hamiltonian is a emergent spin one half Heisenberg chain. When J1 and J2 takes this, uh, is some, uh, has some sign, it is a ferromagnet. While when J1 and J2 uh, has opposite sign, it is anti ferromagnet. In fact, uh, when J takes a staggered value, the numerical calculation has confirmed that the low energy state of the Hamiltonian are described by the SU2 level one wide the minimum weight university class. And in this condition, since the spin point here is integer, the conventional LCM theorems cannot constrain its low energy spectrum. But instead, this spin chain has another exotic symmetry, which is a combination of translation, broken time reversal and the translation symmetry. Here, the translation is one side lattice translation. And uh, we use a T2 to label its generating element. In the low energy, this translation time reversal symmetry just uh, corresponds to the T2 symmetry of the wide dominant weight model. Therefore, we wonder is such a gap is Hamiltonian dictated by the spin rotation and the translation time reversal symmetry on the lattice level? The answer is yes. So in fact, uh, we only need to include the D2 cross D2 subgroup of the four spin, four spin rotation. 
And this subgroup contains the pi rotation along x axis, z axis, and the y axis. And then we propose a new magnetic area same terms. So if a half inch of spin chain of the d2 cross d2 and the translation time reverse symmetry, then the Hamiltonian can be kept only if the ground state are at least doubly joint. So right now, is there any question? Maybe if not, let me go uh, and uh, start proof. So instead of studying the spectrum under the periodic boundary condition, let me digress a moment and consider the symmetry twice boundary conditions. Uh, here the symmetry twice mean uh, is done by pi rotation along x axis, and uh, for conventions we assume the site R is from minus l over two to l over two minus one, and the twice bound is put between the site R. Uh, sorry, the sites are plus one, minus one and are plus zero. Therefore, if the if the three sorry if the three spin hashing include the uh, the bound minus one to zero, we need to replace the S zero and S one operator by the, by the S two zero and S two one operator, which is acted by the Rx pi rotation. To clarify this twisting procedure, let me geometrically construct the, the symmetry twist boundary condition in this figure. So first we draw a dash line to separate the side are small and minus one and are larger than zero. Then we can decorate all the bounds intersecting with this dashed line with, uh, by orange color. And for this uh, decorated bounds, the twist means that we will act uh, our expiry rotation on the spring operators on the one side of this dashed line. For example, if the three spin hashing with size MARN, intersect with this dash line and uh, the site n is on the right side, we will access our x rotation on the SN operator. And the equivalently, we can also only twice the spin operators on the left side. And uh, if the interaction which does not uh, intersect with this dash line, it will keep it invariant. So in general, these twice terms will be moved by the one side lattice translation part of the T2 symmetry, but it is unfixed by the time reversal symmetry since time reversal uh, commute with the Rx pi rotation. Therefore, this twice Hamiltonian must uh, implicitly break the T2 symmetry in this figure. And, uh, but this breaking is very soft uh, since we can continue to the pi rotation along x axis only on the side R equals zero. And then the twice bound will come back to the original configuration. Therefore, if we combine these two operations, the twice Hamiltonian will keep it invariant. In other words, this twice Hamiltonian possesses a modified, a modified lattice symmetry uh, by the gauge transformation on set R equals zero. And although this twice Hamiltonian is invariant, is invariant under this modified lattice symmetry, and are they pi rotation? They are not commuting with each other for the half inch of spin chain. Therefore, this twice of Hamiltonian must have a doubly disjoint spectrum. However, so we should remember our initial interest is the spectrum under the periodic boundary condition. Fortunately, a spectrum robust theorem is proposed by Watanabe, Yuan, and Masaki has been argued that if a Hamiltonian under the periodic boundary condition has a unique gapped ground state, then the Hamiltonian under the twice boundary condition must also possess a unique gapped ground state. Therefore, by this argument, we can conclude that for any T2 and D2 cross D2 invariant half inch of spin chain, the Hamiltonian under the periodic boundary condition cannot have a unique gapped ground state. And instead, the Lorentz spectrum must be at a gap place or gapped with non-trivial one state degeneracy. So this finishes our proof. So 
Is there any question? Uh, can you say a few words? Uh, how do they prove and what's the condition for this relation between periodic boundary and twist boundary condition? Uh, yeah, uh, is there, uh, is there any dimension or certain dimension? Uh, you mean the, this theorem is, uh, is there any dimension constraint for this theorem, this spectral yeah. robust theorem? I think there is no. So they proved the uh, using the I think, let me see using the quantum transform matrix method I think so he so for for example for d dimensional for d dimensional Hamiltonian uh, you can use you, you can rep, you can uh, represent it uh, as a one dimensional quantum transform matrix. And uh, so, sorry, so let me start uh, again. So for a D-dimensional Hamiltonian, you can represent it as a uh, quantum transform matrix for the path integral. And this transform, this transform matrix will correspond to a one-dimensional, uh, another Hamiltonian, maybe we can call it H tutor. And uh, and they discuss they mainly discuss this H tutor. So so if they are uh, so for the twice boundary condition, you just uh, add a how to say add a add a domain wall in the path integral, and uh, then the then the partition function since the partition function is always uh, uh, sorry, uh, let me. So, so the partition function of the twice boundary condition can be written as the twice, uh, twice uh, over the symmetry generals combined with the, uh, combined with the exponential minus h t, and uh, and then since the partition function is always positive, positive, this. Uh, Symmetry generators must be one. So, because if it is, uh, for example, it is if it is a D two group, uh, its element, its eigenvalue is one or minus one, and it, if it is minus one, the party function must be negative. Therefore, there is a contradiction, and then the the eigenvalue must be one. And the party function and the low end party function should be same as each other, same as the party function of the periodic boundary condition, which does not include the symmetry generators. If you are interested, I recommend you to read the paper by uh, by Watanabe Yu and Masaki. Thanks. Um. Now, let me still go. So besides the SU2 case, we can also define the T2, T1 and the T2 symmetry for the wide mean weighted model with general D groups. So T1 still maps T2 minus T and G2 G, G inverse, and it acts as the CP1 symmetry in the closed channel. Then we found there is always symmetrical boundary, boundary state Therefore, T1 and the vector rotation is always anomaly free. And on the other hand, uh, the T2 symmetry is given by the combination of T1 and any order two element of the central symmetry. Therefore, for the SUN wide mean weight model, it has a center, it has a T2 symmetry only if n is even, since the central symmetry is a ZN group, and the E6 series cannot have a T2 symmetry since its central symmetry is this three group. Then we calculate the symmetrical boundary state on the CP2 and the vector rotation symmetry in the closed channel. So here we found for the ACRS, uh, there is uh, a symmetrical boundary state 
if k is even or n is a multiple of four. And for the B series uh, and the D series with the older n, there is always symmetrical boundary state, which means it should be a null free. And for the C series, uh, there is a, a symmetrical boundary state exists only if k is even or n is even. And the, for the and lastly, if we consider D series with even n and E7 series, the symmetrical boundary state exists if k is even. And similarly, we also uh, it would be interesting to discuss the lattice realization, which preserves the C2 symmetry on the lattice. And the way we are expect uh, our result will imply the new LCM type in Gabetti for these lattice models. Mm. Harry, no. can you say again, how did you compute the anomaly of the time reversal symmetry here? So here, for example, for the SU2 case, let me. Is it an anomaly of the time reversal itself or a mixed anomaly with some other symmetry? Uh, I think that it is a mixed anomaly between time, time, between time reversal and uh, back saltation symmetry. I see, I see, I see. Because on the lattice uh, for, for this, for this uh, translation time reversal symmetry, you can construct a symmetrical gap to one stage. Therefore, it should be anomaly free. Okay, now I understand. Thank you. Let me go. So lastly, we divided by the result of the SU2 case. So we here we give a list of minimal magnetic space group symmetry giving the 1D some constraint for the half inch spin chance. So there are totally four different uh, LSM constraints. And uh, the first one and the second one are conventional and magnetic LSM theorems, which were proved before. And the third one needs uh, need the space symmetry is a combination of pi rotation along some axis and side signal inversion. And the internal symmetry is a pi rotation along another axis. And the last uh, constraint uh, only requires the space symmetry it's a combination of time reversal and size center inversion. These two new LCM constraints only require the inversion, inversion center to have a half inch drop spin, spins. Moreover, so the third LCM constraint can be proved by the symmetry testing procedure, but, but the proof of the last one is based on the framework of the lattice homotopy. And the, it is beyond today's topic, so I will not explain the detailed proof, but focus on the application of this list. Uh, uh, sorry, I just want to make sure. What is IS again? Uh, the combination of time reversal and the size center inversion. IS in the third one? Yes, yes. The IS is the, uh, sorry, IS is the size, size center inversion. Uh, uh, so in the third one, G space is Z2 pi is what 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 what? Oh, is sorry, that? sorry, you mean third one? Sorry. Yeah. So the here the pi means the pi rotation along some internal axis, and the is means the side center inversion, and the way put it together means we construct the combination of these two symmetry. I see, I see. So this pi rotation is in the internal space. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So here we summarize the right. one. Question. So why do you consider those cases in this slide? Uh, other than you can consider, are there some motivation for these types? Uh, so the motivation is, uh, is because the three, so the three has been, the three has been hashing, which is showing last slide, also preserve the, the last, uh, Sorry, the symmetry of the last uh, LSM constraint, i.e., the combination of time reversal and size signal inversion. And, uh, and, the, and the things, so you can see that this magnetic space group symmetry is a combination of space, 
space symmetry and uh, some internal symmetry. So here we also construct a, uh, maybe like a gas out uh, the solder some construct. But but these are um, the compatible symmetry for some of the spin system that you have a latest model. Yes, 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 yes. I was sure the and latest model. But do these four different sets of uh, choice of symmetry di give different outcome of the constraint on the ground states or dynamics, or they give the same constraint? Uh, I think uh, there are, so there are some, for example, there are some interaction only of the last one and uh, break the or, or, or first, uh, second, and third as some cons constraint. Uh, so this, for this type of Hamiltonian, uh, the inhibitor should only pro should be only protected by the last uh, L sum constraint. Okay, thanks. But there's a interesting future direction. <laughs> I just thought of you can consider several different breaking phases of the symmetries. Yes, 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 yes. And then you can consider the quantum phase transition between yes, different yes. between them. That yes. could be interesting. Yeah. So I. A critical theory in between. Yes. But since you have so many type, I don't know. What, so they have, I don't know what you want to break and what, what do you want to pull this space yeah, yeah. A little complex. Anyway, thanks. We can share it on that. So here we summarize the 1D spin interaction, which included the Heisenberg interaction and the XYZ interaction and the Scalar triple product three spin hashing, also named as uh, Kyle Radar three spin hashing. And the last one is the uh, Dzerzhinsky Murai tensions. And their coupling coefficient can be uniform or staggered. And, uh, and now we also list uh, whether they respect the uh, symmetries uh, in our air sum constraint. Then, based on the, our list, so each interaction will have air sum type in uh, which is protected by the, some global symmetries. And more interestingly, so we can also construct the many non fusionized combinations. Here, non fusionized means that the spectrum is either gapless or gapped with non trivial one state degeneracy. So, for example, we can combine the Heisenberg intention or XYZ intention with Stargard Dzerzhinsky Murai tension or Stargard scalar triple product three spin intentions. And since this Hamiltonian preserved the combination of size center evolution and uh, time reverse symmetry, this, uh, the spectrum must be non visualized So in fact, uh, for the combination of the Heisenberg intention and the Stargard Dzerzhinsky Moria intention, the low energy effective theory is equivalent to the XID model, which is discussed by Masaki and Affleck in the last century. Moreover, so we can we can even consider a very compact combinations, which include four different intentions. So there are Heisenberg intention or XYZ intention plus Stargard Dzerzhinsky Murai intention and the uniform and Stargard scalar triple product three spin intentions. Since this Hamiltonian also preserve the combination of size center inversion and time reversal symmetry, the spectrum as a feature must uh, non visualize So besides, one can also consider the not non visualized combinations. For example, so one can combine the uniform and the Stargard design scheme right tension. And since this Hamiltonian breaks the all five symmetries in our list, so the ASM constraint cannot reveal its low energy spectrum. In fact, uh, so when the coupling coefficient of these two parts are uh, is equal, the, this Hamiltonian is decoupled and the one state is just a wrong single state. Therefore, it is gapped. And uh, in general, so one can also consider the Hamiltonian, which is uh, interpolating between the non visualized terms, such as the uh, Heisenberg intention or Dzerzhinsky Murai tension, and the uh, non visualized terms. 
such as the prime magnet in Taishin or SPD Hamptonia. And uh, there must be a quantum phase transition point like Landau phase transition or BKD phase transition in this, in this Hamiltonian. For example, so this guy considered the Hamiltonian, which is interpolating between the XYD intuition, the Zasinski intuition, and the paramagnet intuition. And, they are, and in the phase diagram, there is a quantum phase transition line between anti paramagnet phase and the paramagnet phase, and another quantum uh, phase transition line between mm -hmm. Carroll phase and the paramagnet phase. So, so, so the so therefore our LSM constraint can also can also uh re, can also reveal the general phase structure. Now let me give a summary. So in this talk, we discuss the relation between the symmetrical boundary condition or boundary state with the ingability of one plus one dimensional safety keeping the symmetry G from the party function of the boundary conformal field theory. And this is equivalent to the argument that there is a symmetrical boundary state if this safety is a number three. Then we study several interesting concluding examples which correspond to the Lipschitz matrix theorems on the lattice. So the first example is the multi-component U1 boson theory with PSUN and DN symmetry. And the second is the wide mean weight model with center symmetry, uh, vector rotation symmetry, and two time reversal. Sorry, two time re time reversal symmetry T1 and T2. And on the lattice, we also discuss various version of 1D LSM theorems for the magnetic space group symmetry, including spin rotation, translation, and the time reversal symmetry, and the side center inversion. And this extended LSM theorems can also be applied to system with a border class of the spin interactions, such as Dissertation scheme, attention, and scalar triple product rates being hashes. And I think uh, there are several interesting future directions. So maybe we can discuss the magnetic LSM terms for general case like SON spin chain or even the spin system in higher dimensions. And uh, so, moreover, maybe we can apply this boundary state method for the direct spin liquid in two dimensional system. And uh, or another interesting topic, the intrinsically gapless SPD phase or strong SPD criticality, which has a, an emotion anomaly in the low range. So that's all, that's all of our talk. Thanks for your time. Uh, I have a question. Can you go, go back to the previous slide? No, the next one. Yeah, I have a question about the statement that there's a symmetric boundary state if the CFT is anomaly free. Uh, and the, the question I'm going to ask is going to be related to Jubin's previous work with Xiao Gang and Witten. So maybe he can help me out in the middle. So consider you have say a Z2 global symmetry in your CFT. And you know, let's say it's the SU2 at level one one of the examples you discussed before is one of the free boson. So let's say the Z2 has an anomaly. It's not the anomaly with SO3, but I was saying that Z2 itself can have an anomaly. So then according to uh, the discussion you have, there cannot be a symmetric boundary state. Yes. However, by the work of Jubin, Xiaogang, and Witten, you can extend the Z2 to a Z4. In other words, you can pretend the Z2 is a Z4 symmetry. And uh, via this extension, the Z4 is free of anomaly. This is a Z4 in the SU2 at level one that doesn't act faithfully. So you kind of cheat by saying that it's a Z4 rather than a Z2. However, the anomaly of the Z2 trivializes when you extend the Z2 to Z4. That's the content of Jubin's paper with Xiao Gang and Witten. But then that Z, but that Z4 symmetry, even though it's free of anomaly, it does not emit a symmetric boundary state. Um, so I, I would say that maybe the statement you made here needs 
a little bit of qualification. I, I would guess it's true if the symmetry acts faithfully on the local operators, which this Z4 doesn't. Uh, sorry. I, I, maybe I some assumption on the faithfulness is needed for this statement to be literally true. Uh, sorry, Kat. So, so this uh, Carol D2 is, is extended by what to the Z4 symmetry? It's, it's a, there's a, well, so there's a short exact sequence extending Z2 to Z4 and to Z2. So if it extends to Z4, there should be another Z2, right? So one of the Z2 is a subgroup, the other Z2 is a quotient. Uh, I mean, the quotient Z2 is, uh, is the- The quotient Z2 is what? the original Z2 that acts faithfully. Uh, but you can view the Z2 as Z4. So, uh, so in fact, so in my paper, we also discuss the, how to say, discuss the Z4 symmetry and which is related to the extension of Carol Z2. But so, presumably in a different CFD. Uh, I think mm -hmm. it is still SU2 level one one unit model. And in in our paper, we consider the what say? No, 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 no. In your paper, you consider a different Z four. The Z four you consider is the T duality Z four. Yes, 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 yes. That's not the Z four I was talking oh, about. Sorry. The Z two subgroup of your T duality Z four is the Cairo Z two. However, I'm talking about Z the extension of Z two. This is the the important difference of being a subgroup versus being a quotient. What you have in mind is a Z2 subgroup of a yes. faithfully acting Z4. What I have in mind is to extend a faithful Z2 to a Z4. Oh, so it's yes. not a Z4 in your paper. In fact, the Z4 in your paper has an anomaly. However, the Z4 I, I was referring to is free of anomaly by extension. And that was the point of Jubin and Shogun and Witten's paper. It's just a small comment. I, I, I just think that the statement you wrote cannot literally be true, but maybe some assumptions and qualification needs to be added. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me understand, I agree with what Su Han said, but uh, uh, there's a symmetry extend uh, boundary uh, to the, if we extend the symmetry Z2 as a quotient to the extent total group Z4. But, but uh, you are saying, Suhan is trying to come and say there is some qualification about this statement. Is that uh, because? Because the uh, Z4, because yeah. this, uh, if you extend Z2 to Z4, then the Z4 is free of anomaly, and yes. yet it does not emit a symmetric boundary state. And the reason you, you say it does not <laughs> admit symmetric boundary state is it's because the generator of that Z4 will permute the two boundaries. Well, per, well permute. So what, uh, yeah, what Lincoln showed is that the Z2, the original Z2, the Cairo Z2 you started with has no symmetric boundary state. Yes. yes. Right? So if you act as Z2 on any of the boundary state, you get a different boundary yes. state. Now, what is this Z4? This Z4 is to treat the generator of the Z2 as an order four element where despite the fact that it actually squares to one. Yeah. And because the generator does not leave any boundary state invariant, there's also no Z4 symmetric boundary state. However, that Z4 is free of anomaly. It's a very cheap way to generate a counter example to the statement here. So I, that's why I think there should be some further. But, but let me just make sure this statement has nothing to do does it have something to do with the dimensionality here, like in one plus one D? Well, in here it's important it's one plus one D because as, in, as shown in your paper with Witten and Shao Gang, that anomaly trivializes for the H3 class. I'm not exactly sure about uh, the other uh, HN. Maybe you need a bigger group other than Z4. I'm not sure, you know this better than I do. Yeah, in other dimension, if you start with like even dimensional space time, just one plus one, three plus one, you can do the yeah. same. I same see, I see. Then my comment applies to other dimensions as well. Okay. Yeah. But 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 uh, 
your the argument Suhan want to point out has nothing to do with the case that the 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 symmetry extend boundary to Z4 is possible. But if you try to gauge the the normal Z2, you will have a spontaneous symmetry breaking in the original Z2. It has nothing to do with this statement. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I wasn't trying to gauge. And it's not about gauge. dynamics. Yeah, I was just trying to 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 cheat by pretending a Z2 is actually it is a Z4. Yeah. Okay. I see. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Tarong has a question, please. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank, thanks for a very nice talk. Um, I was wondering about um, maybe a um, question that you'd um, maybe a bit um, different than the what you discussed here. So, so the, but it's related to your broad motivation to use low energy theory rather than that is based argument. So there's this general question that if I break, let's say, translation. Um, by disorder, let's say I, I add some impurities in a system, even then you can sometimes, disorder can be irrelevant, perturbation and at, at very low energy, you can get Rutinger liquids, which are described by some emergent translation variant system, right? That, and that happens in, if I have a bosons, let's say in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a random potential, if the potential is not too random, then you still get a Rutinger liquid in one dimension. So there's a transition from a superfluid to localized phase. So question I had was, does your method then gives a way to understand LSM-like um, constraints and systems where disorder is not there at the, very, um, at the Hamiltonian level, but it's only emergent. I mean, the, 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 the translation is not there at the, yeah, at the yeah, at the Hamilton, but it's it somehow yeah shows up in low energy. For example, this um, this question has been asked before. Um, if the for example, if there's spin half per unit cell only on average, let's say statistically, even then people expect something like um, some kind of a Lipschultz matrix like constraint. Um, so there is some old older work by I guess. I'm looking at this paper by Kimchi, Adam Nehem, and Sintel. So I was wondering, does it, does your method give some new? It seems like maybe it it gives some way to make progress on this question, because if you're only working with low energy theory, then you can always ask yeah, whether yes. it's boundary conditions after you have done all the RG, flown to a point where there's some. Yeah, I think so. You mean you mean from the low energy to. Right, I'm saying that if you, if you, I'm just asking what what is the advantage of? I mean, uh, there are cases where your argument does not give more than, but the standard, some, uh, flux insertion argument will give right at least. Uh, uh, but those arguments don't work. Lattice arguments don't work in the presence of disorder. They require exact translation yes. variance. Yes. yes. But you are, but you are, but in your case, if you are only referring to low energy theory, maybe you can. Maybe in that sense, it's more general. Yes, yeah, yes. Just trying yes. to. Yes. Mm -hmm. So for for general, what uh, uh sorry for general deep shoot matrix service, the 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 flux insertion does not work, su such as the discrete symmetry. And right, the, but I'm saying it, it, that's what I'm saying. They doesn't work. So, but but your method only relies on low energy theory. So. So take, take a system where you can't do the flux insertion because there is no lattice translation, but you only work with the, you can ask what's the low energy theory for that system. If that low energy theory has some emergent translation variance because disorder was an irrelevant perturbation in part of the phase diagram, then I guess you can maybe still make the, make the argument. That's what I'm asking. Yes. I don't know, maybe it's not that interesting question, but I... Um, I Right now, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Okay, six. Any other question, comments? Okay, if not, 
That is thank you. Thanks to Ling Hao. Thanks Ling Hao for the wonderful seminar. Thank you. Thank you. We can still stay to ask questions.